I think we're good. I hope. Cool. Thank you, everyone, for being patient. <clears throat> uh, so I'm Alexander Lavin from Pastoral Labs. And today, uh, we're going to talk a bit about simulation. And it's really, uh, I mean, it's the first thing people see when they go to our website, and they just assume these are the guys simulating everything. Uh, that's kind of the idea, uh, but it's really a bit more focused, and especially for this crowd, we'll focus a bit on uh, mechanics and engineering and fluid dynamics and additive manufacturing. But um, at Pastor Labs, we look at the promise of, uh, or this rather expectation of what simulators or digital twins could do, should do, uh, what they're hyped up to do. And it's really this fallacy or misconception of digital physical parity. Like what you do in silico is obviously exactly what happens in, in uh, the physical world. Thankfully, this audience, I don't think I need to convince anyone that's not the case. Um, so at Pasture Labs, we're a team of about 25, almost 30 industry-hardened research software engineers. Uh, what we do is, is we invent, validate, scale new ways of integrating AI and simulation, and in particular, uh, in physical sciences for digital engineering. This is really what we call simulation intelligence, or, or SI. And our approach is, I mean, more nuanced than this, but it does really uh, differentiate from a lot of deep learning or um, other machine learning approaches that look at the existing uh, CAE tool chains and think, how can we throw machine learning at the thing? How can we automate, accelerate, predict where the user is going to click next? Uh, we ask the question, uh, how can we, as humans, better understand physics and better understand our world and build interesting things in that world. And AI could be useful to those ends. Uh, I feel like it's appropriate to also <laughs> set some expectations. Uh, so what exactly is AI and this intersection of, of physics? It's uh, in the realm of physics where there's, I mean, simulation and optimization are pivotal. I um, mean, understanding and predicting the behavior of complex systems and artificial intelligence, uh, not necessarily deep learning. Uh, so AI through symbolic or uh, machine learned models can potentially offer a new paradigm in the creation of these simulations or new ways to approach uh, optimization of physical systems, design of experiment, uh, all the way from microfluidics at the smallest scales to astrophysics and everywhere in between. Sci, uh, SciML or scientific machine learning is more precisely this merger of computational sciences and data-driven machine learning. Uh, it's the uh, subset of a subset of a field for bringing uh, domain knowledge into uh, uh, physics solvers or with physics solvers into machine learned models and data driven models um, and deploying those with accelerated computing platforms. And really at Pasteur Labs, this is our bread and butter. <laughs> As for these things, um, I don't think I need to really clarify how I really feel. Um, we uh, think that there's a lot of promise for uh, generative AI in user adoption in these tool chains. We think that LLMs can help coordinate or even uh, bring together silo teams across uh, mechanics and aerospace and chemical engineering. Uh, those just aren't necessarily the things that we focus on. They aren't the things that we, as an early startup, um, try to build our company around. This is what we do. Uh, so this is a look at uh, simulation intelligence. Um, I encourage you to look up that paper. It's long, don't read it. I'm definitely the only person that's ever been through all the words in that paper. Uh, what we're gonna focus on is uh, how we think about use-inspired R&D in physical sciences and what that means for uh, improving, working with, or really reshaping digital engineering. I promise this is the last time I'm gonna make fun of AI. Um, so 
with this uh, crude example, we have uh, somewhat of a whiteboard sketch of a subsurface modeling problem. Uh, we're building this CO2 injection system. And there's obviously no, like, hey, let's throw AI at it and voila. Uh, but um, there are ways that we can take AI and ML and think about the many non-trivial, non-linear steps that are actually in between what we're sketching on a whiteboard or an engineering pad and what makes it past manufacturing and scale deployment and testing um, and, and has life in the real world. At Pastor Labs, we're building software that is based on differentiable physics, or rather differentiable programming that is tailor-made for doing physics. And that enables continuous information to flow between those many steps, the many steps from the whiteboard to the actual thing in reality. And with the continuous information, and in particular information that is machine learnable, it speaks the language of ML, then we can to try to get what is designed in silico to match what is tested in situ and feed back actual as manufactured data, performance data to the design engineers in the first place. So this is a look at um, our auto physics software that aims to orchestrate the complex models and simulation engines uh, that you need to work in advanced engineering and manufacturing these days. And Again, what this software does is it provides a user-friendly, kind of cool-looking interface that doesn't try to replace your existing tools. It's not the new ANSYS or Autodesk or anything close to that. Uh, but what it does is it packs this automatic differentiation under the hood and geometric data structures that allow you to just drop your existing models and codes onto the platform, work with a high-level user interface, Eventually, we'll have an SDK for our power users, as we call them. And it's end-to-end -end differentiable. Now, one of the ways that we talk about auto physics uh, and the ways that we kind of describe different users and their perspectives and how they uh, will want to kind of I don't know, fast forward through the complexities of things, but really zero in and double click on the things that they're experts in. Um, we like to think that auto physics could bring this multiplayer mode uh, and dynamic digital engineering instead of the static tool chains and the lone mechanical engineer sitting at their workstation passing off three simulated data points to some manufacturing engineer that they never meet, um, or let alone get feedback from. So for now, we want to focus a bit on those interfaces in auto physics and, and the information exchange that needs to happen. And in particular, with CAD and CFD challenges, when you have really, I mean, beyond hello world or anything of interesting complexity, the multiple components modeled with different physics solvers or, or you have joint optimization over multi-scale systems, uh, even systems that vary on different temporal scales, machine learning offers promise, it can be promising, uh, but it can't talk to CAD or CFD. It doesn't speak the same language. Um, if you think about doing a PhD and building one tool chain, you'll get one experiment and good luck trying to get that feedback loop and anything that could resemble an automation loop for optimizing uh, CAD and CFD with downstream data or quantity of interest uh, sort of objectives. So speaking of users, we have, I mean, I don't know, ways that we describe our users. Um, they wear different hats. And it allows us to really think from, I mean, day one, uh, what that multiplayer mode, how that can actually, um, uh, I don't know, emerge um, in the not too distant future uh, and force us not to be so constrained and focused on like the cool ML, um, uh, um, SDK or some REST endpoint that's perfect for this web app deployment. Uh, but really, we need to involve and orchestrate all of these perspectives. And like anything in machine learning and AI, it really, it really starts with data. 
and the data availability. It, it's something that, uh, whether it's um, partners we work with or, or um, customers or even just talking out in the hallways of this conference, people say we have data or a client has the data. Um, it really signals to me they haven't, <laughs> they haven't tried it yet. Uh, if you don't think data is a problem, you haven't really approached your data problem. Um, so these are a few ways that we kind of have these buckets uh, for sort of uh, value add of the auto physics platform um, and how we can enable CAE uh, experts to not build this on their own, not worry what machine learning ready data actually means, uh, but plug and play. And that means um, parameterization to work with uh, machine learning models and, and training and inference algorithms. It means um, uh, vectorized or data uh, structures and formats uh, that can actually interface with downstream machine learning libraries. Um, and always an afterthought, but to do anything interesting, it means scale and scale for software engineers. I mean, that means continuous integration, continuous deployment. It means regression testing, nightly builds. And these are things that have to be from day one in your data pipeline. Um, this is, with all these slides, I don't want to, I feel like I should thank my team for all the things. This one especially, just knowing the engineering lift that goes into a concept of uh, taking your pick or mixing and matching a tool chain of CAD, CFD, FEA, CAM, um, and pressing a button. It's a little more complex than that, but pressing a button and getting these CAE data sets out that are machine learning ready. Here's a little demo, um, it's recorded, we're not allowed to do live demos, of, of essentially a, a CFD um, expert, doesn't know any machine learning things, uh, would be scared if there's any machine learning architectures to sort through, but is going through uh, picking their favorite uh, set of tools and the tool chain uh, selection and the uh, search of what sort of machine learning engine or accelerator or machine learning um, uh, training behind the scenes. It's all behind the scenes. So as it's going again, um, and the user eventually gets to that pink block in the middle, you'll see they trigger this execution of a, of a data set and uh, checking the logs, seeing it, that it's running, um, and then is able to come back to the platform and keep building. It takes, sure, it takes a while. Uh, but coming back here and actually setting up um, another set of our products um, on our platform for deployment. So data sets here, they aren't CSV files. They're not what you just export from existing CFD tools. Um, you export a software container. You export directly to an S3 bucket. Um, these are things that software engineering has been doing, I mean, decades. Um, and it's uh, uh, overdue, let's say, for uh, mechanical design engineers. It's really cool when you think about the variation that you can get when you aren't that lone engineer kind of iterating over a few parameters and then sitting and waiting four hours, 12 hours, often more, uh, to generate one data set and then um, think of like, all right, how do I want to tweak this? Now with the automation and the scaling and pressing a button, you can, as a mechanical engineer and your programming is like, I've done some bash sometimes, uh, you can actually deploy to your infrastructure, your cloud, um, so you don't have to uh, try to, I don't know, think about what it's like paralyzing across, um, I don't know, 64 A100 GPUs or what sort of memory uh, you need on your CPU on that machine, especially if it's multiple machines. Uh, and the automation gives you really rich variation do we see the videos? Oh, cool. I don't see the videos on mine. Um, so just looking at a few of these, and we see that there's very different uh, behavior, let's see, in temperature uh, variation in velocity of these particles. When you look at another instance, uh, you have the effects like that are just boundary conditions. Uh, so you have sort of your, your, your normal behavior, but when you're generating all of these automatically and you have algorithms that are um, intentionally searching um, the, the space of uh, parameterizations, 
you get a really rich distribution and things that you as an engineer maybe would not think to model. Um, you get instances that um, are not always guaranteed, but there's always those that happen in the real world that you never think of in simulation. Um, and that's why, I mean, pick a industry or a sector and no one trusts what you do in silico is gonna actually translate to the real world. We can simulate the things, we can try to simulate all the things, we can get closer. And going back to the team, a lot of us come from AI ML backgrounds and know that like the workhorses behind AI ML, that's automatic differentiation and that's data as a first class citizen, uh, have been uh, the motivation and the perspective with which we tackle problems like automating Ansys and Autodesk and other tools uh, and how we build that in a future proof way so when our platform does come out in a few months, it can be extensible for your custom solvers, your, your uh, whatever infrastructure you have um, on-prem. And here's just a snapshot. This is from uh, uh, robotics uh, data set uh, generation, um, gosh, 10 years ago now, with a setup that actually looks a lot like the uh, imaging display out in the hall. Now, to what the talk is actually titled and supposed to be about. Differentiable physics programming. Um, doesn't happen unless we have the data that is machine learning ready um, uh, in the first place. Now, let's, going back to this sketch of the system of systems uh, problem and our auto physics product, uh, what we're building in auto physics and when I introduced this company as inventing and validating and scaling I mean, that validating part is, uh, I don't know, if we care to track time or <laughs> ask my team, what are we doing every day? Uh, it's so much of this actual uh, validation because we want to provide a catalog of template solutions and demos for those templates in different domains. Uh, so if you're coming in from a, a subsurface energy like the CO2 injection, like that's your, your field, uh, you would be able to find a domain or something close to it and find your way into the catalog of these um, surrogate-based uh, auto physics solutions. Or if you are coming um, as a, um, an MS solutions engineer or a machine learn um, engineer, and you're thinking multi-objective optimization or quantity of interest um, over the system of systems, um, you wanna do active learning, you wanna do uh, data assimilation or calibration with your as manufactured data, uh, you would be able to find the template to start. You aren't starting from scratch. You aren't asked to do any of the machine learning things. That's our specialty, but we also, if you want, you can tap in um, that SDK when we come out with it. Uh, when we talk about these things and actually describe what, <laughs> what is a Tesseract, uh, it, it's been cool to hear from a few uh, partners and customers that um, uh, their first impression is it's black magic, <laughs> uh, but then they get into uh, demos and stepping through some of the docs and uh, the tutorials uh, that come with the catalog. And um, it is uh, a necessary uh, component or, or product of not just our platform, but how we envision that simulation intelligence ecosystem. And really that ecosystem is one that we think needs to be driven by digital engineering and, and the manufacturing um, and design problems here. Uh, and ideally is one that can really level up all the things that we're doing uh, and trying to build in the real world. Uh, so with that, um, if you wanna find out more, reach out, grab myself in the hall. Some of the team is here. Um, promise we're friendly and we'll share more insights uh, than I showed here. Thank you.